Your views, of course, GB views at GBnews.uk. Do you, would you be happy for it? Well, we're going to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, head to head with this now. We are joined for our big debate by Sarah Nathan, who is uh, from Refugees at Home, a UK charity which connects those with a spare room in their home to refugees and asylum seekers in need of somewhere to stay. And on the other side of this, we've got Ben Harris-Quinney, chairman of the Conservative think tank, the Bow Group. Now, Ben thinks that it could potentially pose a security risk and, I believe, would not have a refugee living in his own home. Both of you. Thank you very, very much. It's great to have you on board. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Ben, if that's OK. You get 60 seconds each, by the way. You all know the drill now, I think. 60 seconds each <laughs> to just state your, state your case, and then we get stuck into a much wider debate with it. So, Ben, if we start w with you, your 60 seconds starts now. W would you let a refugee, an Afghan refugee, live in your house? Well, the point I would make is that I wouldn't particularly let an Afghan refugee live in my house, uh, because I think it's, it's wrong to make policy decisions and also individual decisions based on immediate emotion. There are a lot of people um, in need in the world. And, and you know, I've, I've focused a lot of my attention um, personally in, in helping veterans charities over the last 10 years. There's a lot of homeless uh, veterans. Um, so I, I think what's what's happening in the UK at the moment is we're getting some very emotional images over from Afghanistan. And that's fueling a policy debate. That I don't think has been particularly well thought through. Um, I also don't want to be dishonest, as as many people, I think, are in this debate when they say they'll take in um, any number of immigrants, not into the country, but their own home. And then we find out that they that they haven't done so. Um, and I also don't live in a, in a vast mansion where I can uh, take the entirety of Afghanistan into my home. So I absolutely think charity is important. 60 seconds. 60 people. seconds. There's, there's rules, Ben. There's rules. All right, well, can we get him back into everything uh, then? I'll start. I'm going to go over to you. You've obviously listened to what Ben's had to say. Your 60 seconds starts now. Would you let an Afghan refugee live in your house? Well, I've already let two Afghan refugees live in my house over the last six years, and I've had 23 other people living in my house too, refugees from Syria and Sudan and Eritrea, Ethiopia, Iran, quite a lot of places. It's an amazing thing to do. You do need space. You do need a spare bedroom. My kids have moved out. They've grown up. Uh, we were lucky we had a room in my semi-detached, not mansion house in West London. And we've found it a most rewarding experience for us. And it's fantastic for the guests. It's life enhancing. You meet people you never would have met. They have a room and roof over their head. They have safety. They can develop and integrate into British life. And that's really important. There's nothing like sharing a meal for understanding each other. Of course, people without space can't. But 250 people have already applied to host an Afghan refugee with us this week. Um, we, it's not for everybody. There are closed house people. There are open house people. People with open houses might think about taking in a refugee or an asylum seeker who might be from Afghanistan. And that would be an amazing thing to do. There you both go. I'll see 60 seconds, I'm afraid. I'll see 60 seconds. Look, this is, I can just tell there's going to be an absolute corker because you both are certainly on different sides of the fence when it comes to this. I'm going to stick with you, Sarah, if that's OK. Some people would say, hey, look, there's a potential security risk here. What's your view on that? I can't think what more security risk there would be than for anyone taking in a lodger, Airbnb, the friend of a child, whatever. Yeah. We check out refugees at home, people's backgrounds very carefully. We check hosts and guests, as both can be vulnerable within our household. We have our asylum seekers are referred. We take up references. We know all about them. If they're refugees, they've gone through the home office system, which is extremely rigorous and very slow. Um, so we don't take people off the streets. Yeah. We do take people who are but referred. We, do, we are very careful. Sure. But, 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 the, but the reality is uh, many of these uh, refugees, I mean, we don't know f for sure what kinds of um, processes the Home Office intends to have in place. Clearly, they're going to have some, sense of, some kind of screening process, aren't they? But it is the case that some of these people we won't, will get through the cracks and we won't really know who they are. That's the argument people are making. You can never be sure what their background is, what their ideology is. For example, that's, that's the counter-argument. Well, you can never be sure about anything, but these people are much more checked and much more examined than people who might become a lodger or a flat sharer. They're much more... Uh let, they're much less likely to commit crime because refugees hardly do. Uh, we've hosted 2,500 people for 186,000 nights. There's been no evidence of law-breaking, yep. of terrorism, of, of, of anything of that sort. It just right. hasn't happened, and there's no reason to think that it would. Well, there you go then, Ben. There's no reason to think that there's any kind of security issues whatsoever. Well, from a national 
uh, point of view, that's that's clearly untrue. And I think it's it's very worrying a lot of the things we're seeing going on in, in Afghanistan at the moment. It's important to understand that um, in Afghanistan, Al Qaeda, the Taliban, ISIS are all different groups and they're often at each other's throats. And a lot of the people imprisoned um, and and attacked by the Taliban are actually Al Qaeda and ISIS. So there's a lot of people whose lives will be at risk in Afghanistan that also happen to fall into um, those others, what I would call terrorist groups. And and the main reason uh, for the United States refusing a lot of the asylum applications from Afghanistan is security risk. And when you see the UK government saying things like, we're going to waive passport requirements, we're not going to look at documentation. And by the way, documentation that is often very open to fraud in Afghanistan, very open to corruption and forgery and all these things. Um, this is a this is a terrorist hotspot. That is why we were there in the first place. Yeah. And I think to dismiss security concerns is frankly dangerous, especially when you look at some of the terrorist attacks, including Manchester in recent years. Sure, um, but, the that but, very but, 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 but the, the government have said, though, haven't they, Ben, that they're prioritising, uh, they're going to prioritise women and children. I don't recall uh, seeing any uh, women or child terrorists uh, recently, and well, certainly not very small children. So would that abate your fears in terms of security, the fact that many of these people will be uh, women women and children? Uh, well, no, because it's not true. Um, the government are not only accepting uh, women and children. Um, you, I mean, you have cases like uh, the, the, the Begum case where, where uh, women in the past have signed up for terrorist organisations. But um, the idea that, that, okay. that the only um, asylum seekers and migrants that we've had from Afghanistan over the last 20 years have been women and children. That, I'm not saying the only, but, but that, that's what the government have said they're prioritising. Okay. Uh, yeah, but what does that mean in numbers terms? That's what I would say. I think you're going to get a lot of oh. so-called fighting age men coming to the UK in this latest uh, uh, raft of, yeah. of uh, 20,000 so, migrants. So I just want to put to you a point that's been raised here in our in our inbox, gbviewsgbnews.uk, which is that, look, hey, for a variety of different reasons, the fact is that the general culture and our, some would say, norms and values in parts of Afghanistan may be very different to the ones we have here, certainly when it comes to members of the LGBTQ plus community or indeed women's rights. Is it actually safe to actually be having some of these people in your own home or indeed some would extend it and say in the country at all? Well, certainly in your own home, because, uh, we, we, as I say, we do a whole lot of checks. And actually, quite a lot of the people we host are fleeing because they are LGBT. The people who are fleeing are not necessarily the ones you should be worried about. And we are not taking people who are unexamined. There's very little evidence of terrorism in this country being taken, being conducted by refugees. It is really, the really Parsons incredibly Green rare. Bomber. They weren't mentioned, mentioned Manchester. They weren't refugees. The Parsons, you know, the really Parsons Green Bomber, I believe, was that we was an asylum seeker? Yeah, there was one, but I mean, literally, well, there's millions of people. The chances are that the, it is extremely safe to host. I'm not talking about the generality of letting people in the country. We do many more checks after that. We are hosting people who are well known to their referrers, to their lawyers, to the Home Office. We are not taking undue risks. I'm incredibly risk averse. Um, and we are making every care. And there's been no evidence. What I'm looking at really is evidence. There's no evidence that anybody we have ever hosted has been of not, any threat whatsoever. May, well, maybe not you, but, I mean, someone did host the Parsons Green Bomber. I mean, this country did host the Parsons Green Tube Bomber and, and people were seriously hurt there, you know? They, they, they came in, they were not assessed. They, there's a lot of difference, in my view, and that's why Refugees at Home exists, between picking somebody up off the street in a pub or doing what they do in Brussels to take people out of a park and mm. actually having a process by which you do discover about people, and therefore it's much, much safer, and in my view, completely safe. Mm. I, I, can, I can completely understand the difference, frankly, between going to the Calais jungle with, you know, a, a van and saying, like, right, OK, let's get in it, as opposed to you, you know, actually doing background checks, etc. I get all of that. Uh, ben, just want just to give you the, the right of reply to that, I suppose, really. Obviously, they're saying that it's, that it, that it's not a threat. Do you, do you think that actually, look, you know, it's a bit offensive now when people say, some people say, well, actually, if you don't really want an Afghan migrant in your house or if you don't think that we should be having the 20,000 or so coming to this country, that that in some way makes you some kind of, you know, anti-Afghani racist. Uh, well, yeah, clearly that's wrong because there are a myriad of reasons why people can't take 
uh, others into the homes. I, th I think th this country, you know, is, is generally um, a very generous country, uh, but we've got to set it in the in the in the context of the world. The fact that estimations suggest that a million migrants came into the United Kingdom last year, and I think the idea that um, charities and, and, and individual hosts that put people up in their homes are going to be able to run uh, complex and adequate and in-depth security checks on people is, is well, I, I don't want to be rude, but it's frankly ludicrous. Yeah. Um, there will be security threats that come into this country as a result of um, this, uh, this, this latest um, acceptance of refugees. We know that there has been before. We know that many countries like the United States have very serious concerns um, from a security point of view about living these people into the country. And let's remember, you know, it's the United States that was essentially responsible for okay. what's happened in Afghanistan. And yet last year they took 1,500 uh, migrants. And I think we took 10,000. Of course, the UK is smaller okay. than Texas. So, right. so I don't see why the right. pay should be the one to be putting itself at risk at all. All right, both of you, I could, I could go on about this all day. We